Esther, chapter 8, a new beginning. 8 in the Bible is the new beginning. On that day <clears throat> did King Ahasuerus give the house of Haman, the Jews' enemy, unto Esther the queen. So there's coming a time in the tribulation period when the Antichrist is put down dead can be cast off in the lake of fire that burns forever. The Jews are going to take over through Jesus Christ. And Mordecai came before the king, and Esther had told what he was unto her, her uncle and, and her adopted father. So now she's revealed to the king, I, I'm Jewish, this decree against the Jewish people, they're my people, king. And the king took off his ring, which he had given unto Haman, and gave it to Mordecai. So he had to get it back from Haman before he died. And gave it to Mordecai, and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. That must have been a real great thing. Everything that was Haman's now belongs to the Jews. Everything in the world that the Antichrist has, all the possessions... All the merchandise, all the goods will be turned over to Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, turned over to David, the Prince, and the nation of Israel will be the nation of all nations again. And a kick in the butt to the nations is if you do not help the Jew in the tribulation period, you're considered as a goat and you're cast off by Jesus. If you helped the Jew and gave them aid during the tribulation period, you're considered a sheep nation and you're allowed to go in that millennium and be in the land with Jesus the King, David the Prince, and the Jewish people flourishing in the land. So those people that don't realize they're helping the Jew go into the millennium with Jesus, 500,000 billion more better than it was the Antichrist. No mark of the beast. No curse. The only thing that's cursed in the millennium is still that serpent. He's still eating the dust. Everything else, the thorns are gone. The lion's laying with the, the lamb and the crops. is complete great. What the world would call utopia. That's when the Jew is in charge of the world through Jesus Christ. Many people think, oh, if the Catholics are in charge. Or if the United Nations are in charge. Or if America and her president are in great charge. No. Some think England being great church. No, Jesus and his people. His people, the Jewish people. Who got victory over the enemy. Imagine when we get into glory. Because after the millennium, Satan comes out and he gathers an en enemy against Israel and Jesus Christ. They're gone, wiped out. And that's it. There's no more enemies of the Jews ever again. Ever again. So the king took off his ring, which he had taken from Haman. And gave it to Mordecai, and Esther set Mordecai over the house of Haman. And Esther spent yet again before the king, and fell down at his feet, and besought him with tears. To put away the mischief of Haman, the Agai. You'll find that first Samuel 15 again. Where King Saul was supposed to wipe them all out. You don't do what God tells you to do. You got generations and generations and generations of people paying for your sin. And when Esther certified the acts of these two men at the gate through Mordecai, and it comes later, Mordecai is blessed by that action. Whether we obey or whether we disobey God, it will come back in the future to bite you or help you. It's called the law of reaping and sowing. And it holds for, holds for good or evil. And his device that he had devised against the Jews. Now I don't know if that device is the gallows that he made for Mordecai. Or it's called the whole act a device. And when we read the book of Revelation. When the, the people of God and the word are being killed. They are being beheaded. The Bible says. That's a device called the, uh, not the, uh, the uh, guillotine. guillotine. Which he means to 
Then the king held out the golden scepter to Esther, accepted her, proved of her. So Esther rose and stood before the king and said, If it please the king, and if I have found favor in his sight, and the thing seemed right before the king, and I be pleasing in his eyes, let it be written to reverse the letters devised by Haman, the son of Hadamitha, the Agai. So everything that went out, let's reverse it. Now that goes against the law of the Medes and Persians. You can't change the law. So we're going to see the king do a maneuver here. To destroy the Jews which are in the king's province. Plural. For how can I endure to see the evil that shall come upon my people, Jewish? Or how can I endure to see the destruction of my kindred? That's my family. She's already revealed herself to the king. Then King Esther said to Esther the king, queen, and to Mordecai the Jew, Behold, I have given Esther the house of Haman. And him that have and they have hanged upon the gallows, because he has laid hand upon the Jews. Death. He reaped what he sowed by being hung on those gallows he made for Mordecai. Now Mordecai the Jew, how he keeps saying the Jew is a friend of God. As Hercules be is a, is a type of God in this book, though there's no God mentioned. You're not going to devise an evil against God's people and get away with it. Because God said, I will curse them that curse you. So this is what he says, write ye also for the Jews. As it liketh you, however you want to do it, in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, as Haman did. For the writing which is written in the king's name, and seal it with the king's ring, May no man reverse. So you cannot reverse the law. Esther, make a law and no one can reverse it. But you still got Haman's law. The Jews on a certain date are to be killed. That, can't, that cannot change. According to the law. Now verse 9 is the longest verse in the Old Testament. Then were the king's scribes called at the time in the third month, that is, the month seven, on the three and twentieth day thereof. And it was written according to all that Mordecai commanded unto the Jews, to the lieutenants, to the deputies. That's the first time that word shows up. Does this sound familiar? Doesn't this sound like Nebuchadnezzar's notice to all the land to worship his golden image? Not word for word, but it, it's almost like it. Deputies and rulers of the provinces, which are from India unto Ethiopia. 127 provinces. Unto every province according to the writing thereof. Unto every people after their language. So it's written in many languages. Not just one. And to the Jews, written to the Jews. According to the writing and according to their language. And he wrote in the king Asahurus' name, sealed it with the king's ring, and sent letters by post, we call them mailmen. I think English you call them the post. On horseback, Pony Express, riders on mules, camels, and young dr dromedaries. Dromedaries are faster, smaller camels. They're your sports cars of the camel family. Wherein the king granted the Jews, all right, here's the law, which were in every city to gather to themselves together and to stand for their life, to destroy, to slay. Now, this is the same thing Haman said, to destroy, to slay, and to cause to perish. So Haman's law is kill the Jews. Young, old, 
male, female, we'll get to that in a moment, slay, utterly, cause to perish, destroy. Esther's letter is, stand for your life, destroy, slay, cause, and perish. And what her, law, what her letter is saying, protect yourself. Fight back. They're coming to get you. The king gives you a right to defend yourself. So if you kill anybody who's trying to kill you, the king says it's okay because what Haman did was, was wrong. You know whose job that is according to Job, Job chapter 2? That's the Christians on horseback coming back with Jesus. He said, it says we're going to march in ranks and anybody stabs us, they're not going to kill us. We're going to go bouncing through the walls and everything like that. We're going to be an army. And we're going to attack with Jesus those who curse the Jews. And those who help the Jews, I'm going to assume like uh, Rahab and Jericho, we're going to grab those that help and just pull them off the side and protect them some way, somehow. Jericho's coming back, Rahab. Did you? I mean, you ever think about the second coming of Rahab, second coming of David, second coming of Solomon, second, well, third or fourth coming of Elijah and Moses? You say, well, you talk about did Elijah and Moses show up with Jesus on the Mount Transfiguration? Are they not coming back in the tribulation period? Are they not going to come back in the? You got the third or fourth coming of Moses and Elijah. Man, that's going to be a great just talk, being with all the Old Testament saints. Of the ones we've been reading about and learning about. So, the slave caused to perish all the power of the people and province that would assault. That's the first time that word shows up, and it only shows up in Acts 14 5. And I think they, I think that's, they made an assault on Jason in his house trying to get the apostles. Would assault them. So the law is if they come to assault you and you get the definition from Acts 14, then you have a right to defend yourself. Both little ones, that was in Haman's letter, women, Haman's letter, and to take the spoil of them for a prey. Now I'm going to give you a little advantage point here. They are going to defend themselves. They are going to kill those that come after, but they will not take the prey. They will not spoil. And the Jewish people are going to defend themselves. Now, do you remember a city in the Bible where God said, all right, you're to go in there and wipe them out, but you're not to have anything to take anything from. That's Jericho. And remember, uh, uh, what was it, Achan? Remember he took that... The Babylonian garment, a wedge of gold, in the next battle, AI, children of Israel lost the first time. There are people who are being defended here, and Rahab gets to go clean. Take the spoil of them, which they won't, for a prey. Upon one day in all the province the king has of hers, namely, upon the thirteenth day of the twelfth month, which is Adar, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every promise was published unto all people that the Jews should be ready against that day to avenge themselves on their enemies. Now, I had to note here that was 474 BC. So the letter is, hey, prepare, they're coming to get you. So the posts that rode upon mules and camels went out being hastened, hurried up, pressed on by the king's commandment. Rush! <laughs> you ever get a package that says rush? Two-day delivery? Priority mail? There it is in Esther. Priority mail is in Esther 914. Hurry up and deliver it. Solomon said there's nothing new under the sun. And the decree was given at Shishan the palace. And Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel. That's what the Jews are going to be. The royalest, best clothing they can have. Those priests that are going to be in the temple of Jesus, the finest. 
blue and white with a great crown of gold. That's Mordecai, the Jew. And with a garment of fine linen and purple. Fine linen is called the righteousness of the saints in Revelation. And the city of Shishan rejoiced and was glad. The Jews had light. John chapter 1. Jesus. And gladness and joy and honor. And in every province and in every city, whithersoever the king's commandment and his decree came, the Jews had joy and gladness and feast and a good day. And many of the people of the land, here's a second advent reference, into the millennium, became Jews. For the fear of the Jews fell on them. And Isaiah then speaks about, let us go to let us go to Jerusalem, the city of Zion, to hear from God. That's what it is. And when they come to hear from God, they become the children of God. By Jesus Christ. Glory to God. 